go out and meet as many people as you can. But to take it one step further, I, I truly believe one of the best places to go to meet people and, and you know, potentially get a job in this space is go to conferences. I'm at the Foundry booth almost all day, every day. I, I love talking to people that want to get into the space. So go to a conference, bring your resume and talk to as many people as you can. I, I think that's my my top bit of advice for sure. Welcome back to Breaking Into Bitcoin and the Compass Mining Podcast. I am so excited today to be joined by my recurring guest host, Andy Thompson, CEO and co-founder of the Bitcoin Talent Company. And today we have a new guest, John Rodriguez, who leads talent acquisition at Foundry Digital, one of the most massive brands in all of uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, obviously, the topic that we try to we, we try to just hammer on is jobs and recruiting and hiring and Bitcoin. It's a topic that is passionate to both Andy and I. And, and John, the reason I reached out and asked you to be here is a couple months ago, maybe six weeks ago, I saw a LinkedIn post where, man, I was just really blown away with your sentiment. There was a another major employer in Bitcoin who had gone through some layoffs and you put out a post like, hey, if anybody's suffering under these circumstances, reach out, we can help. And my light bulb was, is like every time I turn around, Foundry is asking, how can I help? You guys are massive leaders and I'm so thankful for that sentiment. So um, Andy's been here a couple of times and we'll, we'll ask him to say hi in a moment. But for the benefit of the audience, John, would you mind sharing a little bit about your background, what you do at Foundry, and maybe even for those who aren't uh, familiar, take a moment and, and talk about what, what massive leaders Foundry is. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for that intro. Um, yeah, here at Foundry, we, we want to help, you know, we're, as you mentioned, one of the biggest brands in the space and, uh, you know, we just, we want to keep that going and get the word out about Foundry and, and, you know, with the, these layoffs that are happening in the space, I mean, there's such good talent at these companies, we need good talent. So it's just a, a perfect synergy, but, but yeah, I've been at Foundry for almost three years now. I started January, 2022, uh, and, and to see the, you know, not only the the change in Foundry, but the change in the space in three years. It's been it's been a wild ride. Um, when I joined Foundry, I was employee number eighty. Uh, as of today, we've got about two hundred and seventy. Uh, so some some huge growth in the last three years. Um, I've been in the recruiting space for seven eight years now myself. Uh, joining Foundry was my first uh, venture into the crypto space, uh, and I tell people this all the time. I can't ever imagine leaving this industry. Uh, it's, it's the most fun I've ever had in my career and, and every day is a new challenge and, uh, every day I wake up, I can't wait to come to work. So, uh, it's, it's been an amazing last three years. You, you really have an impressive team. I've been able to interact with many with many members of your team. And like I've, I've, I've shared this uh, passionately before, Jody Baker, who helps uh, uh, lead your uh, deployments at conferences, et cetera. I consider her one of the best in the industry. Uh, Neil Galloway was really a reason why I work in Bitcoin mining. Tim Sandu, who's a massive part of your team. Kyle. Uh, like I, I couldn't be more impressed with the uh, with the Foundry team and, and thankful for you being here. Um, uh, Andy, what, what about you are, you know, I have my own perspectives of Foundry, but in your your role in recruiting and your knowledge of the Bitcoin ecosystem, are, are you interacting with Foundry much these days? Uh, well, in a couple of different ways. I mean, John and I have come to know each other over the past uh, several months, maybe almost a year yeah. now. Just, um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. We we do the same thing. We live the same life, just on opposite sides of that fence, you know, working in-house, as we say, versus myself in a, an external setting. Um, so we've, yeah, we've come to, to, I think, I don't know, I'll say John, come pretty close over the past few months. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, uh, I look at Foundry again, just to your point, as being a leader in the space. I mean, what a, what a setting you guys had in Nashville. That's actually where John and I finally met in person yeah. at their booth there. So that was... That was killer. I mean, just a, a great draw, right front center there for everyone. Um, I also, again, maybe my my bias as a recruiter, I kind of judge by by the talent, you know, the caliber of folks that the companies bring. And I mean, all the names you just named, Curtis, I'll even add one of my close friends, one of our advisors here at Bitcoin Talent Co, um, Sahil, uh, on the design side. I recently joined the team. I know he's off and running, doing yeah. a great job for you guys. So yeah, I mean, you guys just are, are a draw for talent in this space. I mean, operationally, obviously having great success too, but yeah, yeah, not not much not much negative to say about you guys at this point. <laughs> well, I I I love that uh, that you know I, I didn't realize this that you guys have been able to become uh, uh, friends. Like that's something I just am so passionate about. Is that in Bitcoin, I, I'm also you know at that three year mark at, at Compass. Um, 
the, the richest friends that I have, uh, I, I've, I've found in Bitcoin. I think that because um, we share that commonality of understanding freedom money and understanding Bitcoin, there's already so many things that you have in common. And obviously you can't get along with everyone, but when you get a chance to spend some time and get to know people uh, more deeply, there can be some really rich friendships. And that's, that's certainly what, what I've experienced. I think we got several good things to talk about today, but one of the, like, the priorities is like talking about jobs and recruiting. So um, th this doesn't have to be like a template, like where every time we talk about our, our own roles and, and offerings and opportunities. But um, today I'd like to do a little bit about that. I'd like to check in with both of you about what you guys see as some of the most exciting job opportunities inside of your organizations. I'll, I'll go first and I'll share that we're, we're hiring right now for a data center technician for a new facility that we're we're, um, uh, you know, about to energize in Nebraska. We're bringing on 15 megawatts. The guys are already there plugging in ASICs. And I just love that. Those guys are actually know how to plug in a thousand mines, which blows me away the skill sets that we have. So Compass is currently hiring for that role. I know that during the, uh, the, the broadcast, we'll probably show a graphic of that. So I'm excited for that. But um, uh, John, I'll, I'll give the floor to you next. Would you mind sharing what, you know, what are some exciting opportunities that Foundry is hiring for right now? Yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned the data center technician because we are hiring a ton of those right now. Um, we actually call them mining technicians here, but it's the, it's the same job. Uh, our site operations business is uh, is expanding right now, and we need mining technicians all over the country. And, and as you both know, uh, these are typically in uh, the most remote areas of the country. Uh, so, so, for instance, we have a site... Uh, that just went live a few weeks ago uh, in West Texas. I think the town it's in has 72 people. Uh, we, ha we, ha we had to hire 16 people there. Uh, so we've been getting very creative uh, on, on how we're hiring for these positions. Um, so on that operation side of the business, yeah, mining technicians are huge. We need a ton of them between Texas, Nebraska, the Dakotas. Um, and then on our, uh, on our um, let's say proof of, well, it's still proof of work, but on our pool team, uh, for instance, that's what a lot of people know Foundry for is the number one pool in the world, right? Um, we need a, and this is kind of a unicorn position. We need a software engineer that also has a cloud background. Uh, so, so not your, your, your typical cloud engineer, um, a software engineer with cloud. So it's, uh, that, that's been tough to fill, but uh, I'd say those are, are some of our, um, you know, tough to fill or highlighted positions right now. You know, some of the um, like keys to success that I try to, to share is that if you have an opportunity to hire a Bitcoiner, right, for any role, um, if, if you were previously a chief financial officer, but you found Bitcoin, you, you, you come be a chief financial officer. If you previously ran data centers or operated data centers and you found Bitcoin, they're, they're, that, that exists here. So hiring Bitcoiners um, it certainly helps, but then when it looks to how to you know hire locally, especially in those remote areas, I think of looking for what's the closest Bitcoin related community. Um, whether it's a meetup, it might be a hundred miles away, but you know where's the closest Bitcoin related community and start sharing those opportunities there. I've I've found that to to be successful in those in those remote areas. John, there's there's a bunch more to talk about today. I'm so thankful, but Andy, I'd love to ask you the same question about anything exciting that's on your on your board and and. You know, I kind of skipped over you, took it, took it for granted that you've been here for a little bit. But as you're as you're talking about a few of your openings, would you give just a brief update on, you know, Bitcoin Talent Company and the work that you guys do? Sure. Yeah. So so again, Bitcoin Talent Co. Um, we started this business uh, a little over a year and a half ago now to to really be the first uh, dedicated recruiting service for the Bitcoin community. You know, there's a lot happening in crypto, Web3, whatever you want to call it broadly. Um, but just given my own personal obsession with Bitcoin and, and my own Bitcoin only stance, I saw an opportunity to, uh, to really provide this kind of expertise again to, to our community specifically, right? And so that's everything across the Bitcoin landscape, mining, you know, Bitcoin endemic companies, wallets, exchanges, whatever, right? But again, all for the purpose of Bitcoin. Um, actually, quickly to echo what you said, Curtis, about hiring Bitcoiners, you know, I think it's pretty important to, to articulate this shift that we see too, where, you know, when I started this business, it's I started this as a recruiting service for Bitcoin companies looking to hire, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, and that's obvious what that means. We all know what Bitcoin companies are. But increasingly, I, th I think we really are a recruiting service for all companies looking to hire Bitcoiners. And so that that distinction, again, it's, it's, it's really important over time. Bitcoin continues to eat the world. All the cliches that we know to be true of every company becoming a Bitcoin company, that thesis is starting to play out slowly but surely, right? And so just had to kind of throw that out there, but what we see the future looking like for us as a business, but also for Bitcoiners, we'll call it looking for jobs, you don't have to work at a wallet or an exchange anymore. You know, there's all kinds of companies that need to finally build Bitcoin products and services. And so that's where, again, we start to see a lot of the opportunity in the coming cycle. Um, 
right now where where we're having a lot of uh, success and, and even just some quick wins and, and open roles right now, actually, I will say without uh, jinxing it, we are um, very close kind of in the final you know, offer negotiations right now uh, to hire a CFO level role in the mining space. So um, again, won't, won't share more about the business or the or the candidate this time, but really exciting for us. Yeah, I've, I've spoken with you, Curtis, over the past few weeks about our active push into the mining space. This would be a real big win for us and for our client too, and a massively important role for a company who is you know just now on the other side of, of a you know a public offering, right? Um, so so that's a good one. Yeah, fingers crossed yeah. that closes today tomorrow. Uh, we are also kicking off a number of searches actually on the engineering front for all different kinds of companies. So I've I've said in the past, you know, the optimism I bring to the table around like there's all kinds of opportunities, technical, non-technical, and that's true. But funny enough, what we're seeing right now is actually this pendulum shifting back to uh, you know, a lot of technical roles being being in need right now. Um, and my gut, I you know, don't quote me on this, but my gut tells me that every time there's like a real big engineering push, it's kind of a like a leading indicator for just another another run in like hiring broadly, another like bull run even. Uh, it doesn't track price directly, right? But these mm. companies are scaling such that their infrastructure, their technical needs are scaling too. And so that's just kind of a, a little, little exciting thing to see happen where on the other side of that, I expect us to come back to again, yes, all kinds of non-technical roles from finance to people to marketing to sales um, and just start that whole cycle once again, right? That that concept, you know, well, Bitcoin's eating the world, but the Bitcoin Talent Co. is uh, is a landing spot for other, um, you know, non-Bitcoin organizations that are looking to bring in Bitcoin, um, you know, skills into their organization. That they would be hiring Bitcoiners. Wow, I hadn't considered that. That really is um, that that really is an interesting. Uh, concept for our audience. Then your your other your other point, Andy. You know, you know, obviously you're not jinxing it, but you know that CFO role um, that you might be placing because I'm familiar with you and some of the people who have gotten just amazing roles through your through your work. I know a few of the people that you've placed, but this is my ignorance. Like, take that CFO role for example. Will that later be announced? Will you guys make an announcement sure. that you know so and so was placed and Bitcoin? Does that does that stuff hit the public? We, we will. Yeah. I don't know about how much of a press release, so to speak. Right. But we, uh, I mean, selfishly, yes, we'll be happy to share the success we've had on behalf of our client. We'll be talking about that. We'll be congratulating the individual if and when this, this, you know, kind of, kind of gets over the finish line. Right. So, so yeah, you, you should almost certainly be hearing of it, you know, when, when that's all announced. Well, I, I'm going to keep my ear out for the grindstone. I look forward to, you know, Andy, you're a passionate Bitcoiner, like, you know, you and John, we've also become close over the last, I think, year and a half. And um, I'm uh, excited to, you know, promote your guys is success. John, I might, I might kick it back over to a question for you. So, you know, our, I think our audience is, you know, we see, we, we primarily speak to, you know, the existing mind, mining industry, as well as like the overall, um, you know, the Bitcoin miner ecosystem with folks looking to get into Bitcoin mining. And there's lots of different, you know, roles and ways that you can hire into jobs. And, you know, specifically Andy's a recruiter, um, he has a different, uh, a different perspective. A lot of times he'll work directly with the company and then, you know, not necessarily as, as directly with the, the job seeker. But so my, so there's lots of ways that we could look in and have a conversation. But my, my direct question to you, John, if you would, if you if you'd take the lead on this, is um, what what's your top advice for job seekers these days? What what should folks be doing as they're looking to come to work for Foundry or looking to work in the ecosystem? Top advice for job seekers. That's a great question, and you know it's it's hard to break into this industry if if you're not already in it. I mean, if I open up a uh, you know just a basic software engineering job, I might get 300 applications on day one. Um, so it's hard. And, and I think, you know, the biggest piece of advice I have, and I actually have a, a quick story I'll share too, um, is put yourself in the place where the people are. Um, so, so you had mentioned something earlier, Curtis, about uh, local networking events. Um, you know, go out and meet as many people as you can. But to take it one step further, I, I truly believe one of the best places to go to meet people and, and you know, potentially get a job in this space is go to conferences. Um, you know, the conference in Nashville, um, Bitcoin 24, I, I met a kid, a uh, software engineer at a financial firm um, somewhere on the East Coast, really wanted to break into the space, huge Bitcoiner, but had never worked in it. He was at that show on the conference, conference floor every day with a folder of resumes, he going to talk to anybody he could. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so glad he came to the Foundry booth and I'm so glad I was there at that time because I had an amazing conversation with him. Uh, he actually has his final interview today. Um, you know, and, and, and we started him off on a, on, on a certain track and a certain position we thought he'd be good for. He's interviewing for a totally different position in a totally different department. Um, but, but he's, he's a perfect fit. So 
like, you know, people like me are, are at these conferences. I'm at the Foundry booth almost all day, every day. I, I love talking to people that want to get into the space. So go to a conference, bring your resume and talk to as many people as you can. I, I think that's my, my top bit of advice for sure. They, they say you don't want to know how the sausage is made. I'm blown away to figure out how is it that Jody gets you strapped to the to the uh, foundry booth all day, every day. I, I'm <laughs> like you guys have amazing booths and they're always staffed with your just your 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 guys uh, uh, incredible team. So I'll be interested to know how she uh, how she gets you tied down. You know, a Andy, any any reaction or feedback to John's um, you know uh, advice for job seekers? Yeah, hundred percent correct. I mean, I, I say this all the time as as often as I get a chance. Yeah, pr proof of work. Again, we'll we'll keep using the cliches but it's 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 true it is so true i mean it's the strength of bitcoin it's also the best way to, to get a job in the space too um get out there make the connection shake the hands do the work to the extent you can do this digitally as well put your portfolio out if you're a designer right you know uh, contribute to open source software if you're an engineer like there's all kinds of ways to to translate proof of work into your skill set right and how you can kind of put yourself out there um, whether through us or not, I've seen countless examples as well of, of folks doing exactly, you know, what, the, what this candidate that John was talking about had just done, just, you know, beating down the doors, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to get a job you know, eventually, right? It's, it's a timing issue is really the only unknown variable, but like to the extent you're putting in the effort, you're continuing to be top of mind, you know, for, for folks, once they do open a role, it's, it's absolutely going to benefit you. You mentioned that for folks when they do open up a role, that's some of my advice is, is that the, you know, a lot of the roles that you might want are never going to be listed or, or they won't be listed until they've already identified a handful of candidates. What I advise folks is to think about what skill sets they have, the work that they can best do, the value that they can bring, and then look for the organizations that they align with. And like, you know, you mentioned beat down the doors, but, you know, uh, be in front of them and looking for what the opportunities are. Like, you know, I mentioned Neil Galloway's um, uh, uh, earlier, uh, my, my initial role at Compass Mining didn't exist. I was, you know, I was in Neil's DMs as mm. deep as I could be. And they, they created a role for me uh, based on um, that experience. So, you know, networking before the listing. However, I think we're all aware that like the, the common denominator is, you know, job boards and job listings and folks applying. And you mentioned 300 applicants in, in one day, John, would you, would you talk from your perspective and how you engage at Foundry? I, I think, you know, we'll, we'll pull up Foundry's, you know, job page. You guys are hiring for multiple opportunities right now, but would you talk about what best practices are for you? Where, where do you guys generally post your openings? And, and would you talk about that yeah absolutely um, so obviously everything uh, is posted on our career site uh, and then our career site automatically puts stuff on indeed and, and LinkedIn um, another thing I've noticed too is, is I mean there's as we all know thousands of job boards out there um, and I I've, I'm noticing that uh, the, the the scrape the scraping technology that these websites are using I mean they're they're pulling our jobs to their sites like there's so many crypto sites that our jobs are listed on um, whether it's Web3 Careers or She256, uh, you know, specifically for women in the space, uh, the Blockchain Association has our jobs, um, Crypto Careers. So they're on, off the top of my head, our jobs are probably on 25 to 30 different job boards a lot, and a lot of industry-specific job boards too. So it's really not that hard uh, to, to find us and, and find what we have going on. When, when someone sees an opening and they want to, you know, they, they want to pursue it, like my attitude is, is to look for, you know, a network and to try to network inside of that company and get some insight. But what, what does an applicant for, you know, a foundry role, do they need to try to speak to you directly? How do they engage with you or your team if they want to like learn more and pursue an opportunity, John? What, what's going on in that context at Foundry? As you just said, definitely, you know, if, if somebody knows somebody within the company, reach out to them first and, and have them you know, reach out to me and say, hey, I know so-and-so. Andy, you had mentioned Sahil. I mean, he he knows so many people in the space and I get so many people reaching out to me saying, hey, I know Sahil, you know, I'd love to be a part of Foundry. So I'm going to interview those people. Um, so that's that's number one. Number two, you know, message me on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I, I try my best to respond to everybody. Uh, might not be the first day that you message me, but, uh, you know, by the end of the week, I should get back to you. But yeah, message me and let me know you applied. Uh, at least then I can I can flag your resume. Um, you know I can't I can't guarantee anybody an interview, but I can at least guarantee I'll look at it. Um, you know, again, like I said earlier, just applying, there's there's no guarantee I'm going to see it. Um, you know, after 300 in the first day and 900 by the end of the week, that's a that's a tall order to go through all those resumes. So, uh, you know, if anybody is interested in Foundry and you apply, definitely just shoot me a note on LinkedIn and. If you know anybody at Foundry, even better, make sure uh, 
you know, make sure their name's included too. I've, uh, I've, I've written advice for people before. Is it on LinkedIn messaging? You can't use the can message. Hey, how have you been? It's a long time since we connected. I'm like, that's, that's, that's getting, that's getting deleted. Uh, uh, Andy, John, John's insight that all the scrapers are so effective that if he's posting directly on his website, that that's getting cross populated in lots of places. Do you, do you have any insight? What, what do you see on job boards and, and, you know, cross population? And then what are you doing with your own listings? Yeah, I mean, yes, the the job board space is um, is quite saturated to be honest. And I mean, we he threw out how many examples of like very specific crypto web three ones, like, but just across the board, I mean, there's thousands, you know, hundreds yeah. of thousands of job boards out there. Um, our our idea of a job board has been a little different. Again, we're we're approaching that problem maybe from the other end of the spectrum, right? Where we yeah you know, we have a, a very one to one like human service. We work directly with teams, hiring managers to actually go find the person for the role. Um, that said, yes, we do have a job board, as you've alluded to, Curtis, and as you've seen. Um, for us, it's been more of a maybe a way to advertise some of the key roles that are that we're working on behalf of our clients, right? But we don't really look at it as like the more the better, like trying to scrape across all the industry. Um, there's an argument perhaps for that actually facilitating business development efforts, you could say, right? But again, our our chief, our primary focus is on the, the actual search execution, right? So really going to market, finding, really finding passive candidates. So the, the inbound, the applicants on job boards is one end of the spectrum, right? People who are seeking these jobs. What we're doing is augmenting that inbound pipeline by then going to find, you know, folks who are not applying, yeah, passive talent as we call it, right? Um, and so I think, you know, maybe this is a question for John, you know, most, most companies will ideally try to leverage both of those um, pieces, right? Through their own jobs page. And then someone like John on behalf of his own company, like going out and, and actually sourcing folks too. John, would you, I think that the direct question is, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll provide it with a little context. When you're, when you're doing the majority of your hiring, are you um, interacting directly with the employer in, or employee or potential candidate, or are you ever working with recruiting firms or talent professionals? You know, I've been able to learn a lot from, from Andy. I think it's easy to think of C-level roles potentially going through, you know, placement with, you know, with headhunters um, or re recruiting firms, but you know, there every type of role could be hired in, and Andy's done a good job of educating me. But would you shine some light? What What's your experience? Are you Are you generally working directly with that candidate, or do you sometimes work through hiring agencies or talent companies? Yeah, sure. And, and so we we very rarely work with agencies. Um, you know, I was an agency recruiter for years. This is you know these past three years is my first venture into internal recruiting. Um, you know, so that's that's my strength. I think I'll toot my own horn here for a second, but that's my favorite part of the job. You know, I love when we have a hard to fill role, and and you know, it's like John, go find this person, or you know, when my CEO walks over to my desk and says, you know, hey John, we want to go hire this person. We're not going to post it. Go find him or her. Um, I love finding people. I love head hunting, and you know, as Andy alluded to, those passive candidates are usually the best candidates. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't know that they want a job until I reach out to them. Um, and, and I love finding that hidden talent. So I would say we use agencies rarely. Uh, they, they definitely have been effective, but, but 99% uh, of the time we're, we're doing our own uh, in-house search. You, you mentioned uh, your, your CEO and like, honestly, I wonder if that's not where um, Foundry's massive ethos comes from. That, that idea, every time I turn around, Foundry's asking what they can do to, what they can do to help. I, like the word on the street is, is that that's top down, that you guys have amazing internal culture and just phenomenal leadership that, and that even that CEOs walk into your desk and saying, hey, here's, here's what we're looking for. That's, that's really impressive. That's not necessarily a question, but any, any reflection on that, John? Mike Collier is the best. Uh, and, and the culture at Foundry here is the best. And as you mentioned, it starts with him. And he's so approachable. Uh, and I've worked for a lot of CEOs in my day. Uh, and, and Mike's the best. You know, his door is always open. He's always walking around the office. He knows everybody's names. Uh, and, and he's always available for a conversation. So he's done an incredible job of, of setting this culture for the past five years. We're actually coming up on our five year anniversary here in the next month, which is crazy to think about. Um, you know, and yeah, like you said, it all starts with him and he's done an amazing job. So hats off to Mike. I'm you know, happy to work for a guy like him, no doubt.
That's, that's uh, that word on the street matches that that entirely. You, you know, I think in our, our conversation, we've primarily been you know optimistic. I'm just hearing a lot of positivity. We're all Bitcoiners. We're you know we're we're excited to be in this space, but we, we all have full time jobs, and like sometimes the grind the grind is difficult. John, what what are the what are the challenges that you're facing? Because you this show might be being listened to not just by Bitcoiners, but from you know hiring teams of other companies. Is there advice that you can give them overcoming problems? Like what what challenges are you seeing in your role and any solutions that you've found to work around them? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question. You know, I think and I don't I wouldn't even say this is a challenge, but I think, you know, talking to candidates, especially folks that have never worked in the space, even though they might be a, a hardcore Bitcoiner until you've worked in the space, you truly don't know what it's all about. Um, but really portraying the message to people like, you know, you need, and I, I tell, I say this on almost every interview. If you're looking for a merry-go-round ride, this isn't it. Uh, you know, we need people that like to sit on a roller coaster and sit in the front seat of a roller coaster because, as mm -hmm. we all know, there are some insane up and downs in this business. And you know, just educating, you know, our candidates on, hey, when you get here day one, it's not, it's not always going to be roses. Um, you know, we need people that can, um, you know, one of our, one of our values is bend, don't break. And I think that's that's huge for somebody to have in this space. Like you need to be able to take the punches, roll with it, get up the next day and go to work and, and you know, get back to it. So just educating people that it, uh, you know, you got you got to be a little bit of a risk taker to, to be in this business. Andy, um, you know, any any feedback on, you know, what what John just shared or or, you know, as a alternative, any recent challenges that you're facing? And like so my attitude is, you know, give your best stuff away for free. So tell the good things. But also, if you're facing challenges, don't be afraid to share it. It helps other people grow. So I'll give the floor to you for a moment, Andy. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're stating the obvious here, but John's exactly correct. And just the uh, the difficulties of of working in Bitcoin, I even say working in mining specifically, my goodness. Right. And, and actually, I'll, I'll maybe maybe give John some credit here. Like you could argue the entirety of his time at, at Foundry has been in a, in a bear market, right? It's like, so yeah, obviously, obviously John knows where this is going to go. And obviously he loves what he's doing. Like, so that that's what you need to, to succeed in this environment. Right. Uh, but it is tough for that reason. And so, uh, yeah, like I said, stating the obvious, you know, finding someone who is culturally aligned, who is a Bitcoiner themselves, understands what we're trying to accomplish here. Understanding actually like that a bear market while painful, you know, financially speaking, like, doesn't really mean much with where we're going, right? So being able to kind of turn the blinders on, stay focused, yeah, that's just, again, that's just why it's a huge part of the 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 knowledge, like understanding Bitcoin to operate in a Bitcoin world, but also like what you embody as someone who's in Bitcoin, that that makes you more resilient in terms of, of riding these markets up and down, right? Um, the difficulties we have right now, maybe maybe is actually the, this pendulum, ever swinging pendulum of, you know, candidate market versus client market, so to speak. Um, there are far more job seekers than than opportunities available in Bitcoin right now, and so it's uh, it creates a more competitive environment. It just creates a lot of well the frustration for folks who have been at it, trying, trying, doing the proof of work, you're doing the right things, but for months on end, sometimes a year on end, right? I, I have to I have to acknowledge the fact that that can be tough for folks, and so. Um, while that is the case, uh, I, I will immediately bring it back to optimism saying like, we still know where this is going, you know, stay at it. Don't, don't get discouraged yet. You know, the opportunities are going to come, whether it's with the Bitcoin companies we know today or all companies who eventually hire Bitcoiners, as I keep saying, you know, that, that opportunity is going to be there. So just, yeah, we just gotta, gotta ride the ups and downs and know where we have faith in where we're going to be going. You know, something that I try to share, like, you know, uh, uh, no, no one ever tells you how hard marriage is, right? They just, you know, uh, you know, and we got five kids. I'm, I'm, I'm in the, uh, I'm, I'm in the deep end, but you know, like also, I don't know that people speak this frankly. Um, if, if you don't have to work in Bitcoin, like you can keep your current job and still be a Bitcoiner. The grass is not always greener. This is a, um, you know, this is a real industry. We're a startup industry. It's, it's difficult. It has challenges. So, you know, if, in, unless you're just absolutely compelled that you have to work in Bitcoin mining, you can be that Bitcoiner inside of your, or Bitcoin, you can be that Bitcoiner inside of your your organization, um, you you mentioned you know that there's lots more applicants than there are openings. 
and you know also touched on you know you know John some of the you know the the roller coaster uh, uh, example of the of the industry. My personal experience is even though we've had you know all time high during my my tenure, you know echoes that it has felt primarily like a like a bear market. Um, my perspective is is that we are working exceptionally hard at the bear market, and I don't know if we get to take a break in a bull market or not. I'm not sure if no. it's if it's uh, no. You're telling no. me no. no. No, we we don't. I mean, I, I kind of yeah say that in jest, but of course not. You know, because with with a with a bull market comes just new eyeballs on Bitcoin, becomes new Bitcoiners, right? Um, especially more of the consumer facing services. That's where these these companies will be ramping up, trying to 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 literally not crash, right? To continue to onboard all these users. I mean, you look at the numbers of like, I mean, I, I don't want to use like Coinbase as an example, right? But it is just from a number standpoint, just like how many new people are signing up. But but so too will River. You know, will. Unchained, you know, the, the more actual Bitcoin companies that we know and love, like they're going to see explosive growth in the next uh, bull market. So, so yeah, we're not going to get to rest, but we're also along that way going to be able to like kind of enjoy and celebrate like, oh, this, this is how good it can be. And for us, I mean, it's worth noting, obviously as a business, we'll, we'll be exceptionally busy, you know, more companies getting started and or receiving more funding and or just doing better financially such that they want to scale and use recruiting services to, to hit those targets in a timely manner. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a great time for all of us, but it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be stressed maybe in, in the opposite way from what it is in a bear market. Right. I, just real quick on that, John, any any take from your uh, your perspective? I mean, uh, bear market, we're building constantly uh, bull market. Is there a chance to, uh, to to coast for a moment or it's just going to be more of the same? Yeah, I don't see any time for coasting. <laughs> no. uh, you know, bear market is head down building for the bull market and bull market. It's going to be crazy. Uh, you know, so that's one thing I've learned in this space is, uh, it's, it's go, go, go at all times. Uh, you know, so it's, uh, but it's fun. It's, uh, it's a ton of fun. Andy, we're, we're getting, we're getting close to wrapping up. I'll probably have a couple closing questions with John. And then I want to excitedly announce, uh, ne next month's, uh, uh, guest on our podcast. I, Andy, I've gotten good at knowing your website. It's bitcointalent.co. And I think in the past you've shared, um, your even just direct email address. But this audience is really potentially going to be interested in looking at the opportunities that you have and engaging with you. Where do you want, if they're listening today, where do you want folks to find you and at Andy? Uh, sure. So, so again, the website there, you'll see the job board itself. Again, our job board's a, a bit more limited than, than the Bitcoiner jobs or even the, some of the crypto ones that John alluded to because it's uh, primarily using that to advertise you know, our, our clients' open roles, right? Uh, but as always, you can contact me directly, right? Uh, what You also said this earlier, Curtis, but oftentimes roles are not actually posted. And so reaching out, getting on my radar. Hey, I'm actively looking. Hey, this is my background. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to take a conversation with folks who are even just kicking the tires um, such that the eventual matchmaking process is that much easier, right? I always see value in at least starting the conversation today. So yeah, reach out to me directly, Andy at BitcoinTalent.co. Um, LinkedIn, Twitter, again, you can find me there. We've, we've posted these in the past, but uh, yeah, I, same as John, right? Uh, any, any recruiter should always be looking to, to chat with folks who are you know, looking for roles, uh, even if the right role is not available at that time. John, I, I, I led with our conversation just being impressed by that LinkedIn post that you had made. And that's what caused us to, to have a chance to, to, to get to meet each other. Um, are you fairly active on LinkedIn? Is that a, you mentioned, you mentioned DMs earlier. Is that a, a, a platform that you use quite a bit? Absolutely. I'm on LinkedIn all day long. It's all day I've, long. I've always <laughs> got, I've got, I've got three screens at my desk and LinkedIn is on one of them at all times. Oh, that's fantastic. What, what about other like, you know, ways to engage? Do you, is that, is that the preference DM you on LinkedIn or do you, do you, are you, are you active on Twitter or Telegram or where do you like to ask folks to, uh, to learn more about you or Foundry's opportunities? Yeah, LinkedIn, definitely the best. Uh, you know, folks can email me, jrodriguez at foundrydigital.com. Uh, obviously the Foundry website, foundrydigital.com houses our careers page. Um, I do have a Telegram. I did have a Twitter. It got suspended for no reason. I have no idea why. Uh, it's horribly annoying. I'm in the process of still trying to get that oh unlocked. Um, I had a lot of good stuff on there, too, so it's a real shame. Oh. But uh, for now, let's say LinkedIn's the best. That's wonderful. That's, uh, we, uh, a special plea to Elon to, uh, to free, to free yes, John. Yes, please. Yeah. 
Um, I'll, I'll make a I'll make a quick announcement and then uh, 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 one last thing to plug um, next month. So you guys are all aware that we're we're trying to build a recurring series here. It's just Andy and I have a lot of passion for hiring and recruiting and the idea that we could have uh, leaders from Bitcoin um, companies like yourself, John, and from Foundry to come on to talk and to share what their opportunities are and to engage with the community. I think it brings a tremendous amount of value to any to any audience. Um, so next month, uh, a, a sneak surprise. Uh, uh, Compass's own head of people, uh, Jim Zimzak, is uh, is going to appear. If you guys don't know her, she literally is a rock star. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed. She's gonna, Andy. She's going to bring uh, some fun energy. She she awesome. won't have the beard game down. We'll have to uh, we'll have to like comb our hair or 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 whatever it is. But John, as a as a as a final question, you'll see that I kind of got a little set up here. Is that uh, when you listen to content, when you you know. Um, you know, watch a podcast or listen to a podcast. What's your channel? Where do you go to engage with content like this? I always go to Spotify. Yeah, that's me too. That's me too. So um, guys, I'm Curtis. This has been John and Andy. Thank you very much for joining us. You know that when you're consuming content, that the likes, the reshares, the follows, they really do help spread the word. So if you're listening to this today on Spotify, if you would please hit that follow button and subscribe to our show, uh, we'll see you again next time. John and Andy, thank you very much. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. It's been great.